Hello boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be adding Google Authentication to our Flutter application using Block. So before I begin this video, you should know a few things. Number one, uh, you should know a little bit about Block. Secondly, you should know how to create a Firebase project and also enable Google sign-in method into it. Okay, like always, the source code will be down in the description. If you want to go and check it out, then you can check it out right now. And if you want to see me explain, then please sit back and continue watching this video. And if you are leaving right now, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving a like to this video. Let's cue the intro. Number one, you should have your Google Info plist file into your Flutter project. After that, let's check into our dependencies. You should have Firebase Auth, Firebase Core, Flutter Block, and Google Sign In. Once you've done that, you need to create a Firebase authentic—I mean, authentication folder into it. This will uh, specifically deal with the authentication mechanism for your Flutter application. So before that, I have separated into a data folder. I have providers package. Provider will be those class which will be uh, responsible for communicating with third-party packages. So first one is our Google Sign In provider. So this will enable us to sign in with Google. As you can see over here, we have one method that is called login. So what it does is it will use the Google sign in package and create a Google sign in account. After that, it will create a Google sign in authentication from Google sign in account using Google sign in dot authentication. After that, we're going to create auth credential using Google auth provider. That is, this is also available in Google sign in package using dot credential where we will pass in Google sign-in authentications access token and ID token with which it will return a auth credential. Now if we check on our Firebase authentication here, if we check on our login application, it expects a credential. Uh, using this credential, it will authenticate user or sign in the user using the credential with this method and in turn, it will return a Firebase user. So if you look more into this Firebase auth provider, there's another method called get auth states. This returns a stream of user depending on the state changes into the authentication. If user has logged out, you will get a null. Otherwise, you will usually get a user with valid details. And another method is logout, where we're going to log the user out from the Firebase auth. Similarly, in Google sign-in provider, we have logout method that will log out user from Google using the Google sign out if user is already signed in. If we go into our repository folder, this repository will be responsible for communicating with the providers and in turn, it will return a detail that is understandable by our current application. Before I go into the return type of this application, I would like to go into the model of our application. This is the authentication detail for our application. There is five property values. Number one is valid. Is valid will be set to true if we receive some user detail from Firebase authentication mechanism. If it's false, then we will not check any further details down below. If it's true, then we will check for UID, is the unique identifier. After that, photo URL, a email, and a name. All right. Now, if you go into authentication repository, we have something called get auth detail stream. This will tap into the Firebase authentication provider called the get auth states, and using the map function. We are converting the user that we have received or the data type we have received from Firebase Auth to something we can understand. That is our authentication details. Whenever we get any detail from this get auth state, we're going to call get auth credential from Firebase user. This is a helpful function that takes in Firebase user and checks if user is null or not. If user is null, then we're going to set is valid to false. Otherwise, we're going to fill in the rest of the detail. Get auth detail uh, we have covered as of now. Second method is authenticate with Google. Whenever user clicks on login with Google, we're going to call this method, which will be responsible for login user using the Google sign in provider. It will first call the Google auth Firebase provider to login, which requires credential that we have received from Google sign in provider dot login method. And in, it will return the authentication detail using this same helper function. So now that we have covered the functionality of the authentication, we're going to implement the block. I have created a block over here. Since our package name is authentication, I'm going to call all our block with 
uh, starting name as authentication let's go into the event first so how do i name the events there's something called authentication has started whenever your application starts it will check for authentication detail right so this event will be triggered at that moment after that if there's any state changes in the authentication if user was logged out and right now it is logged in this event will be triggered and application google started this event will be triggered when user clicks on login with google button so the last uh, event is authentication exited this will be called when user clicks on the logout button so corresponding to this event i have some states over here uh, this is the initial state after that we have authentication loading and we have authentication failure if it's failure i would like to know the reason of the failure so that's why i have a message field over here after that we have authentication success users has authenticated successfully so in turn i should get a value called authentication detail now if we go into the block this is our main business logic component of our application since we are working with stream i'm going to create a stream subscription over here that will subscribe to the authentication state stream whenever you create stream subscription you need to close those streams otherwise you might get some memory leak issue that's why i've override the close method of the block and written this line of code this says if uh, authentication subscription is not null i would like to cancel that subscription so the main uh, function of our block is map event to set which is the async generator which means that it will be responsible for generating several threads so first event is whenever authentication has started what i need to do i'm going to create a try and catch block over here since we are communicating to our firebase and we are using internet over here we are expecting some error that's why i've written this error code over here if something kind of error occurs i would like to print that error so that i could debug it after that i will return an authentication failure which will say error occur while fetching the odd detail if that doesn't happen then what we like like to do is return an authentication loading set so that user could get a circular progress indicator over here i'm going to assign our stream subscription to authentication repository that will call the get auth detail stream and it will listen to it so whenever there is a new value found i'm going to call the state has changed so this will only happen when user has logged in or logged out whenever user has logged in i'm going to call authentication state has changed and i'm going to provide the authentication detail over here which we have received from listening to the repository so right now we do not know whether the authentication is successful or not i'm just calling the state has changed so if we go on the second event that is authentication state change which was called from authentication started whenever this happened it will check the authentication detail field found on authentication state change and it will go look for the value called is valid so if it's valid then i'm going to call authentication success so that we could show appropriate message to the user or you can redirect the user to the home screen otherwise we'll show authentication has failed so this is our authentication state change event covered now the third state is if the user has clicked on login with google to handle this event same try catch any error we're going to return authentication failure enable the login with google try again so basically this uh, event will be occur from the login screen so i would like to show this message on the scaffold of the particular page that's why i'm returning this text over here so that user could try again and after that we're going to first return the loading screen so that i could show the progress integrator on the login page after that first i need to get the authentication detail from authentication repository where we will call authenticate with google and after that from the authentication detail model we're going to check whether it's valid or not if it's valid i'm going to return authentication success otherwise i'm going to return authentication failure in that way we have created our block and all our implementation to the firebase package and google sign in package now if we go into the ui of our application first we need to go to main screen over here if we go on main screen i have written few extra lines of codes over here as you can see widgets flutter binding dot ensure in slides after that await firebase dot initialize app you need to add these two lines to initialize the firebase whenever the app has started after that i have added a block observer to our particular application this is especially handy when you are trying to understand current state of your block so i have written a app block observer that overrides block observer and assigned to the block if you go into this class this is app block observer which has extended the block observer and overridden our on change on transition and on error methods i have simply printed the blocks run type as of now you can get this uh, same file from my github repository so after initializing our block 
our Firebase. Now we go into our main application. So main application will return block provider. Since authentication block will be used throughout our application. That's why I have given as a parent to our material app so that any widget you create could access the authentication block. It returns a block provider that creates an authentication block. So authentication block requires authentication repository. So I've given you the authentication repository over here. And authentication repository requires Firebase provider. I have given the Firebase provider. And Firebase provider requires Firebase auth. Similarly, it also requires Google sign-in provider. And Google sign-in provider requires Google sign-in. In that way, I'm creating all the class in one single file. It will be also useful when you are using dependency injection in future so that I could move this file to somewhere else. And I do not have to initialize any of this value into the our uh, repository provider and other files. And it returns a material app, will return the home view. As you can see over here, I'm not going to the login page first because I don't want to show the authenticated user who have not logged out from our application to go into the login page again and again whenever they open the application. So they will directly go to the home view and home view will check whether the user has logged in or not. Already logged in, it will not uh, send the user to login page. Otherwise, it will send the user back to the login page. So if you go on home view, home view is a stateless widget that returns a safe area whose child is scaffold. Scaffold has an app bar whose title is home and it has the action button which is the icon button and it has an icon called exit to app and on press it will call the block provider and look for authentication block and add an event called authentication exited as we all know whenever the event ex authentication exited occurs it will lock the user out from the google as well as firebase authentication on its body i've written a center widget whose child is a block consumer I've used block consumer because I want to build the application on some state changes to the authentication as well as I want to do some navigation. For example, if user is not logged in, then I would like to send the user back to the login screen. That's why I've used the listener event over here. So whenever there's authentication failure, I will do a navigation push replacement to login main view. Into the builder. If it's initial, if it's uh, beginning state of the authentication, then I will call the authentication started. As I, have, as I have told you earlier, whenever app starts, I would like to call authentication started and return a circular progress indicator. User will not see this uh, progress indicator, but it is written so that if there's any kind of delay, then user could see something on the view. If authentication is loading, then I will return a circular progress indicator. If its state is success, then I will display the email of the user saying welcome your email and lastly I return a text widget that will uh, say undefined state run state dot run time tab. This, uh, this will only happen if we are not handling a particular state of the authentication block so that it will be useful while debugging but I do not recommend re <laughs> writing this line of code when you are going into the production. Now uh, user if for example when the authentication was started user have received the authentication failure then your user will go to the login main view if you go to our login main view it's again a safe area whose child is careful about saying login and whose body is a builder function so builder i have created this builder because i want to display a snack bar over here if i don't write that then i will not be able to display the snack bar whose builder function will return a, again a block consumer because if user is successfully logged in into the google then I would like to navigate. That's why I've written a block consumer over here whose listener event will do this. If authentication is success, it will go to home view. Else, if it's authentication failure, I will display a snack bar so that user could see his login item has failed. Now, onto the builder function. I've written this build when function where if authentication is successful, I do not want to rebuild this widget because in authentication success, we are going to the home view. Otherwise, we are always going to build this into the builder function. If you see, if it's authentication initial, if it's a beginning state, if it's authentication failure, I want to return a center widget whose child is the outline button and on press event will call the authentication with Google started. It will create this event or upon this event, we know what exactly happens and whose text will say login with Google. You can make fancy over here. Currently, I have only displayed a text. If state is authentication loading, I will create another widget called circular progress indicator because if I keep the button over here, 
the user might be able to press the button multiple times which is not ideal that's why i'm changing this button to a circular progress indicator so that no e no additional event could be triggered again to handle any undefined state i have written this tag and i'm going to repeat it once again going to into the production please do not write this line you should be uh, handling all the events that going to occur in your blog all right i think that's it <laughs> uh, this has been a short video uh, i hope you have understood what i'm trying to say and if you have any question please uh, comment down below and consider subscribing to this channel giving it a like to this video follow me on twitter and on to my github profile link will be down in the description and that's it thank you so much for watching see you guys next time